I gave it a four and a half. I'm not sure if I said that. That's huge for you. Yeah. <laughs> This is huge for Don. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's huge for you because I never give I never give four and a half or fives like hardly ever. No, no. So <laughs> listen to her advice. <laughs> Welcome to the Novel Universe with Dawn and Ashley, book club buddies who love to read YA fiction. We'll discuss the good, the bad, the ugly, and oh my gosh, we need to talk about this right now. I'm Dawn, the criticizer of books. And I'm Ashley, the fantasy architect. So grab something sweet or salty and join our universe. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Novel Universe with your hosts, Dawn and Ashley. And this is our last podcast of 2020. And today we will be counting down our personal top 10. We've already done our top 10 for the books that we read for the pod, but because Ashley and I do read different books throughout the year, uh, we are individuals that way, we have a different list, and our lists are not going to be the same as our podcast top 10. Ashley and I have not discussed what is on our current list, so it will be a surprise to me and her as well as to you. So that's exciting. Uh, If you like our reading style I know some people follow certain booktubers or goodreads people because they they have the same opinions about books so if you have found that you share my high dawn opinions or Ashley's opinions let these be recommendations for you if you have not read them all right who's going first I can I guess I read mine first okay so in my bottom 10 spot for me was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson Um, So Dawn actually recommended this book to me, and she was like, I wasn't a fan, but... I was like, I I believe I didn't like this book. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so this book in particular made my top ten because I am all about fantasy. I'm the fantasy architect, and I know we talk about this all the time. Dawn is the criticizer of books. You will hear us talk about it always. But in this one... I really like the fact that we follow our main character, Elizabeth, and she has been born and raised in a magical library full of, like, grimoires that come to life and that have to be subdued and, like, all of this stuff. So we're stuck in another magical realm but present day. And she basically gets assigned to a specific warlock if you will and they end up having to fight a bunch of demons and monsters and things coming back with old deals and new deals and you know selling your soul and what that looks like having demons that work for your family like are they good are they bad this book in particular was just it was a nice breath of breath of fresh air for me because I hadn't read something like it before. There were some moments that were a little bit predictable, but I really enjoyed it. So this definitely was one for me that made my top ten. What did you rate it? I gave it a four point five. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I believe. Yeah. I did not know this. This nope. is. I gave it a four. I gave it a four. Okay. I gave it a four. I stand corrected. I gave it a four because there were, like I said, there were some moments that were predictable, but overall I enjoyed the story and I definitely want to read the second one. So if Ashley wants to read a second one, you know that she's liked it enough to continue. Yeah. When I tell you I don't want to read the second one or I'm not sure, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, you know that's me too. You know, if I don't like it, I ain't reading it. Ashley's been trying to get me to read a court of stocks and blocks what is it a cord of fingers and toes i don't know i'm like no the new moth book that's coming out and she's like i can't do it I'm like you need to do it no i don't know if you get desperate enough you will i know no you will. i will never be that desperate i didn't like book two sorry okay <laughs> i next <laughs> Uh, I, all of my books are either a, between a four and a five rating, just FYI. And my number 10 is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And I gave this a four. This book is, I can kind of tell when books are really hypey because it's like all over Instagram, all, or bookstagram, I should say, all the freaking time. 
and I have not seen this book anywhere. And I'm a teen librarian, and I probably should have because it's a pretty high-rated book, and Brandon Sanderson is a pretty prolific author. So Mm -hmm. I was shocked that I had not... I've seen it around, but not a lot. Not like Aurora Rising or something, you know what I mean? That's also a space odyssey, and so is this one. So if you do like space odysseys and aurora rising or illuminate by christoph and kaufman then you should read skyward it is uh it takes place in space it is about spin and her father has been branded a coward this in this world they are constantly fighting these aliens called the krell the the people that are featured in the book are human and spin's father instead of fighting he ran and so he's been branded a coward and so spin has also been branded a coward and she doesn't like that and so she wants to join the military and the pilots who are like the elite to avenge her father and her name and everything so i like this book because it's not predictable this is my first sanderson book so i wasn't sure what to expect but i know he writes a lot of adult fantasy and uh, science fiction i should say so i'm assuming it's pretty high level writing which it was it wasn't predictable it wasn't tropey the main character spin is insufferable but she's written that way and it's written well all of the characters mm-hmm. were uh, well written uh, even the adults there were a couple of adult characters in the book and they were conflicted and they had great backstories and it was exciting it was never boring I gave it a four because it's incredibly plot driven and I don't like plot driven so there's a lot of battles and training and there's a lot of ship vocabulary that I could give a shit about and but that's a me problem so if you are okay with like plot driven and a lot of like ship jargon and war jargon then you'll probably give this a five I thoroughly enjoyed it I think I'll read book two I probably will just because I rated it pretty high but yeah go for it it was really good that sounds amazing. I haven't yeah. read that one yet, nor have I heard a lot about that See? one either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, no one's really talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so in my ninth spot, I put Fable by Adrienne Young. We have talked about this book a bunch in our podcast. I gave this book a five because it. this was my first book by Adrienne Young and I really liked the fact that it was a super easy read. I could just fly right through it. The plot was easy to follow and everything had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like it was, it was just all, all, all good. I will definitely be reading the second one, which comes out in the spring. Yeah. Cool. All right, my number nine is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Yes, I know, Cassandra Clare. Uh, All her books are really popular. She's one of those authors, and, you know, it's fine. I I like The Infernal Devices. I did not like The City of Bones. I don't think I'm an urban fantasy liker. I don't think I like that, and so I think that's why I kind of preferred her quote-unquote historical fantasy, if you will. But I liked this one because I really like the relationships. I think Cassandra's really good at that. I liked the friendships that the five main characters had. And I liked that it was all kind of, not that everybody was in love with everybody. I wouldn't necessarily call these love triangles. But there were, everyone was kind of paired off. And I know some people hate that. I personally don't. I know Bardugo does that a lot, and there's a couple of other authors that pair their... Jay Kristoff and Kaufman do that a lot, too, where they pair their characters off, and I personally don't mind that. So I liked... I liked... I can't say I liked all of it. I didn't like the whole fighting the demon devil backstory, like that stuff. Not backstory. That was like a B-plot. I didn't really care about that. If that stuff wasn't in there, I probably would have rated it higher, but it has to have some action in it, but... Anyway, I really enjoyed it. And the next book comes out fairly early in 2021. So I'm excited about that. I'm like, I'm really intrigued to find out what happens next. Yeah, well, that's that's my number eight book oh, in okay. my lineup here. So everything Don just said, mm-hmm. I'm very excited to read book two. This was my first 
book by Claire that I actually remember reading, <laughs> if that's, like, sad to say. Like, kind of. <laughs> because I started with Mortal Instruments, and, like, I just couldn't get into book two and three very well. So I didn't read Infernal Devices. So then going into this, I was like, who the heck are all these people? Like, I feel like <laughs> we're going back in time. Or is Mortal Instruments, like, way advanced? Yes, that is the answer. And I did not know that. <laughs> so, you know, now that I understand, you know, the family tree a little bit better, I'm very, I'm very excited. I know why she has such a huge fan following because, I mean, everyone's interconnected. Everyone has their own stories and, you know, whatever. But it's... She does do relationships well. She yeah. really does. Because we're always like, oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> For everybody. <laughs> yes. Totes agree. Your number eight. My number eight is Punching the Air by E.B. Zaboy. I gave this a four to five. This also is not widely known. Uh, I think Elizabeth Acevedo has the told in verse world wrapped up around her little finger but this book is about a young boy his name is Amal he's black and he is on trial for I don't know if it's attempted murder of a a white boy and his his friends get convicted he does too the boy is in the hospital in critical condition so they're like hoping and praying he doesn't die because then it goes to murder so he's under 18 so he goes to juvenile detention and while he's there he we kind of watch him go through he has some anger problems and so we kind of watch him deal with that there's a lot of themes about family found family real family friendship that's done really well it is told in verse and a lot of it is poetry which is I thought was done quite well and it's also based on the story of the um but now they're called the Exonerated Five. I don't know if you guys remember. Back in the 90s or something, there were five boys that were uh, convicted of raping a white woman in Central Park, but they were they were wrongly accused. And Trump was still saying that even though DNA exonerated them, they still should be put to death and all this bullshit. So it, it's based on one of the guys who is involved in the... They were called the... Um, uh, I can't remember the original name of them. I'll think about it, but then get back to you. But... Yeah, it was it's a it's a it's a good story. Evie's a boy. She has an interesting voice. If you do like Elizabeth Acevedo, because I think Clap When You Land won the Goodreads Award for YA. So if you like Mm -hmm. that style of writing, check this book out. It is also done really well. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was good. I have to update my uh, TBR (laughs) here. (laughs) If you're trying to reach some 60 books, it's a quick read. Right. (laughs) <laughs> okay so my next book on our lineup is the bromance book club by lisa k adams i gave this book a 4.55 i believe on our podcast we've already talked about this a bunch super easy read it is not a ya novel it is definitely adult romance but it's funny cute you get attached to the characters really well And this, Don and I read a lot of adult books this year, more so, I think, than years previous. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice that we dabbled in and out of different genres. And this particular author, we both really enjoyed because we read all three books that are out by her this year already. (laughs) Still think the first one was the best. Agreed. So this one definitely is on my top 10 because I have recommended it to all of my friends to read. <laughs> I think everyone's liked and it. And they all have read it. They all have liked it, yeah. <laughs> They have all read it. <laughs> Going back to the name of the group, so it, it, it's a big duh on me. It, they were called the Central Park Five. Freaking duh. Uh, so oh. maybe that rings a bell. Okay, my number seven is The Project by Courtney Summers. I gave this a 425. And this is not published until February 2nd, 2021. I got the arc. I got like three arcs, actually. I don't know why. Okay, so this is about two sisters, Lo and B. Lo is the younger sister, and she was in a horrific car crash. She almost died. And B is the older sister, and she was, she she kind of felt guilty about it, even though it wasn't 
anywhere near her fault. She still felt guilty because she wasn't there. And so while she's grieving for her sister in the hospital, this guy appears to her in the chapel and he presents himself as Jesus. But lo and behold, he's a cult leader. So she gets swept up in this cult. And as Lo gets older, because at the time, I think Lo was only 12 and B may have been like 16 or 17. So when Lo becomes an older woman, she starts she starts to seek her sister and get her out of the cult because the cult is not letting her see her sister at all. And this book is not like Sadie. If you loved Sadie, you probably loved the pacing of it. It was very quick. This is the exact opposite. So if you're reading this book, just please know. It is not the same pacing as Sadie. It is a character study into these two girls. It is about grief and it is about faith. And it is not fast paced at all until like the very end. And by the very end, I mean the last 25 pages. But it's just Courtney is a a beautiful writer and she's not lyrical necessarily. Like there were some really good quotes, but she's more thematic she's a thematic writer and so this book I would consider to be a book a, a book club book or a buddy read or something like because you really need to like stop and pick it apart and discuss it with someone in order to really appreciate what's going on in the book but I I, I didn't love it as much as Sadie obviously I gave Sadie a five I gave this a four two five but it's still a really good book yeah that's on my TBR as well I was like oh it's come down February yay <laughs> Don's already read it. <laughs> hey, I saw Courtney Summers and I was like, on it. Uh-huh, I know. I say. <laughs> so I asked you for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my, what are we on, six? Yes. Six, yeah. Okay, so my six spot one is The Sky Beyond the, Sp- the Storm. Oh, my gosh. The Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. We just did this podcast and... This, for me, was a nice way to close an end of an era. Like, I remember doing book club with Dawn when we were still doing it through our local library, and we read Ember in the Ashes. So when this book first, like, or this whole entire series came out, we were all experiencing it together. So for me, just to get this end of the book was really nice, because I enjoyed it more than Dawn did. You have to listen to our podcast to hear what we said. <laughs> I gave this book a 4.5. Don did not. Don, Don gave this a 3.75. Yes, so, right. you know, definitely would like to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm all about people uh, finishing series and, like, doing it well. I felt that it was done well. Don has other views. So, like I said. <laughs> I'm the criticizer at books, and I criticized she, it she is, all along. She is indeed. Because I was like, oh, my gosh, this is great. And I'm like, <laughs> she's going to hate it. <laughs> but this is why we're podcast buddies, because we don't have the same opinions on books. And yeah. so it makes for a really good book discussion. So Agreed. what was your sixth spot? My number six was As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole. And this is book two in the There Will Come a Darkness series. I believe last year I gave There Will Come a Darkness. It was in the top three was it in the top two or the year before I don't know but anyway whatever year I did my top 10 it was in the top three or top two and this is an underrated book not a lot of people are reading it not sure why I think it may be because this is not a fluffy book the series is not fluffy this is not the cruel prince I'm sorry but the cruel prince is nothing but fluff and it's full of tropes quite predictable unpopular opinion but hey I hated that first book this is not that. So if you are, <laughs> what is that face, Ashley? Did you did you read the Cruel yes, Prince? Ashley read the Cruel Prince, the first one, and I wanted to shoot myself. Oh, I didn't know. How, how come we haven't did, talked I, about this? I could not read the second one. I was like, why is this getting so much hype? It's still getting all this hype. It just it is- won. It just won fantasy. Why? I know. I know. I was like. <laughs> maybe it shifted i don't it know like I, said, I stopped reading after book one because i was like well all that was just a load of predictable all of that there was nothing new and original in here no mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. yeah anyway that- i digress <laughs> yeah <laughs> we will we will uh yeah after the podcast we can like really can talk about that how out. much we hated it uh but this book is not <laughs> anything like that it is quite critical 
this her first book she got a literary nomination which usually well it only goes to critical books so if you are looking for something where you kind of have to take notes and you can really sit back and really get into the world and into the characters then this series is a good one for you this is book two I did have issues with the confusion of the world it is quite confusing. I did have to, after I finished reading it, I did have to take two hours to kind of unpack everything I read. And and in my, uh, I did a podcast review of it. And most of that podcast was for me. So that when book three comes out, I will know what happens because I'll just go back and listen to what I had to say. Because <laughs> it was that's how confusing it was. However, it was a good confusing because it was interesting. I was invested in the characters and in the world. And it has a prophecy. Don loves a prophecy, and this one's a good a shirt one too. That says that. <laughs> Don loves a prophecy. Don loves a prophecy. <laughs> and singing cool. And uh, so, if you have not read this series and you have a couple of days left of your Goodreads goal and you want to get in a good one at the end of the year, then start with There Will Come a Darkness and then read As the Shadow Rises. I gave it a four and a half. I'm not sure if I said that. Mm-hmm. That's huge for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's huge for Don. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> That's huge for you because I never give I never give four and a half or fives. Like hardly ever. No. No. So <laughs> listen to her advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my next book in my uh top five now right correct yeah Mm -hmm. okay is the bridge kingdom by danielle l jensen so i don't know if you've read anything by her she's an adult fantasy uh writer no and i read her series that is called the stolen like songbird series like a few years ago and was absolutely in love with her series she does adult fantasy and romance very well because a lot of it is very much so plot driven it's not based on the romance the romance is in there and you're like okay that's fine but it's it's just enough that you're not like okay stop it please like i she's actually doing stuff with her world she's putting you in a place that you're like okay okay don't ignore what she's saying because the the relationship between the two characters that are supposed to be together or whatever is not what's important it is the whole rest of it which i really appreciate it because i like a good romance but i also really like a good fantasy at the same time and so this book has very much so your enemies to lovers trope but it's done well it's done well it's about a girl laura who is sold to Aaron, who is the owner of this particular island, is supposed to be a part of this peace treaty or whatever. She's sold sold as part of the treaty to help bring peace and trade, but she's supposed to kill him. And it's not just her that's supposed to kill him. There is a whole heap load of things that's happening at the same exact time. So Dawn did not like a book called, I think it's from Blood and Ash, right? I didn't read it. There, did you read that one? No. no. The other one, um, I forget what it was called. But you were like, "Well, she goes in to kill him and gets what she." That's why I made that face because every time I read uh, literally four books like that this year, and they don't kill the person they're supposed to kill. It's like I'm sick of this falling in love crap. Kill them. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for the killing. So, this book I applaud because. Because it is done so well. I'm into book two right now, and I am I am so much so enjoying this whole entire thing happening. <laughs> so this book had to be on my top five because Ashley has had very few books this year that I have, like, literally flown right through. So if you know I'm liking something, it's done within 24 hours. Like, Is this the one you were talking about before we started the pod where you were like, oh, my God, I'm excited? Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like literally giving me heart palpitations because I just can't, I just can't like put it all together. There's so many things happening in the world that there is. Yeah. I really like it. What'd you give it? I gave this book a 4.5. Okay. Cool. 
I don't know why I didn't give it a five. I'm having the same emotions. Yeah, I was like, I, 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 sounds pretty like you loved it. I don't know what happened. I probably, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I give away fives very flippantly and I don't want to give them away flippantly like I want to just be like mm, so I'm gonna think about it because I just rated it yesterday so okay it probably will we'll see how book two ends okay well my number five is also like Ashley's where she just finished it and I just finished this today and I did not think it was gonna make my list but it is the rage of dragons by Evan Winter <laughs> came highly recommended by lots of people this is adult fantasy and Evan Winter is black and we don't get a lot of black authors who write fantasy so and that includes YA so when you find one hold on to it tight this <laughs> one I gave this a four and a half at first Ooh. I was like oh it's probably not gonna be higher than a four but then the second half like really was just like okay I'm I'm, I'm into this now uh this book is it takes place in an African type of a country all the characters are black and they okay so the way the world is is there are it's a caste system and so there are nobles who are of noble blood which means both their parents are nobles and they have they are gifted by the goddess quote unquote and they are bigger and bigger they have bigger bodies and they're bigger uh they're they're strong and in this world, I should say, they're constantly fighting this war. It's an endless war. So it's 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 a war book, which I did not know. And because I don't read plot synopses when I read a book, I just go into it blind. And then the, um, the bottom half of the cast list are called the Lessers, which is properly named. And they are not gifted. They, oh, I also forgot to say that the, the higher cast, they have the women are gifted with magic. And they can, while they're fighting, they have the power to, like, make the chosen ones, like, giants and, like, super strong. Or they can communicate over long distances. Or they have all these other little powers. The lessers have no powers. They are pieces of crap. They only join the military. Well, they join the military, but their only purpose there is to just be on the front line and to just die to give the nobles more time to prepare so they don't care about the lessers they hate them they think that they're disgusting and you're not as good as me so it's kind of this like political and um um it's not racism because they're all they're all the same color but um it's a cast it's a it's a class system basically and our main character Tao is a lesser and he has had some death in his life and he's pissed and he's like I'm gonna join the army I'm gonna show everyone that lessers are not pieces of trash and of course there's a war so the only reason why I didn't give this a five is once again it's plot driven I don't like plot driven books it is all war and the training I was just kind of like skipping through the training stuff as I was like I don't care but the war stuff I was reading because it was consequential the training stuff is typical training on paper big woo but the war stuff you know you kind of have to pay attention to what's happening and who's killing who and why and all this stuff so the second half of the book was like really good uh Tao is a fascinating character his character arc is great I know I'm horrible with this with the synonyms here I was an English major by the way uh <laughs> it's great so, um what word can I think of uh great <laughs> awesome <laughs> another thing about this book is the world was kind of info dumped which is unfortunate because it's interesting i have not read anything like this before and there are dragons i know i didn't mention it because the book is called rage of dragons but <laughs> the dragons are There's basically dra used and the the women i said who are the gifted ones they can control the dragons but they're kind of using and abusing the dragons for war purposes so you can probably guess how that's going to turn out. And it's in the title because it's called Rage of Dragons. Uh, so once again, if you're looking, not once again, but if you are looking for a lots of dragons in this book, it ain't going to be in the first one. So just FYI. It's in the title, but it's not really in the book that much. But yeah, the world could have been a bigger part of the story. And I like worlds over plot. And the world was info dumped, even though it was info dumped, it was still interesting enough for me to not drop it too far because I hate info dumping. 
but it was mm-hmm. an interesting enough world that I was like okay I'm okay with it being info dumped for now the next book which I will read that's already out that I will I will read it pretty soon it won't be info dumped because I know the world right now but yeah if it, yeah I, I recommend it to you Ashley I'm not sure how you do with plot or do you like I like more? I like that mm-hmm. I think you'll yeah. like it it's it's not I mean when okay so I haven't read a lot of adult fantasy but I've read um some N.K. Jemisin and The Red Sister by Mark Lawrence and I'm reading The Name of the Wind by Rothfuss and adult fantasy seems to be quite world driven and character driven and so when I was reading this it kind of started to read like YA because the characters are under 18 and the writing isn't as rich as the fifth season or the last wish or something like that so i was like this is ya this ain't no adult fantasy but it's not it's it i just wasn't expecting it to be such a plot heavy book i was expecting a world heavy book and but yeah read it it's good that sounds good yeah i'm all for that <laughs> <laughs> okay so my number four book of the year is house of earth Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Moss. She is not number one. You should be surprised. I'm not surprised, actually. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. So this book, I gave, I think I gave this book a four. I wanted to give it a five because I love my boss girl. But I think I had some, I had expectations for this book And I don't know why I put them into place to be a certain way. And it might be because I've read both of her other series. So I was expecting things to be a little bit different than what I got. So I almost want to read it again and not have any expectations for it because I feel like it was unfair of me because I was like, oh, I'm going to I want to have this, this and this. And that didn't happen. And then the whole story, though, explodes on you the last 150 pages, and you're like, what yeah, the that was a heck lot of story. Happening? You know, which is why it's still one of my top books, because it's fast. She knows how to write a good story that's like, did you see that? Because I didn't see that coming. No, <laughs> I wish you could see Ashley's no. face on the screen. It's like yeah, you're just looking at imaginary people. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I have a captive audience. So my laundry is <laughs> looking very smiley. <laughs> anyway, but this book, it made my top five. I love this author myself, but the story itself is definitely worth being in my top five. Yeah. We reviewed this book for the pod way back. In, I think this was the last one we read before the pandemic. Because we were used to Anything. podcasts in the same room. And then... Yeah. Yeah. It took us three hours to get through. Yeah. <laughs> well, that book is like 900 freaking pages. Yeah. It's huge. Mm-hmm. All right. My number four is The Other Side of the Sky by Megan Spooner and Amy Kaufman. Once again, we have done this book in our podcast. We have talked about it before. And so I'm not really going to go into it, but... This is also an underrated book. Like, nobody's reading this book either, which is odd because it's Amy Kaufman and she's pretty popular. But I liked the blending of fantasy and science fiction, which you don't see very often. And it wasn't tropey. It wasn't predictable. I got a new ship with the main characters. I like them a lot. I liked the villain, which can be tough to pull off sometimes. Like, I don't think I had any complaints about the book. I don't know why I didn't give it a five. Something wasn't quite there for me to give it a five, but it was very close. So if you have not read this book, read it. It's good. Mm hmm. Yeah, this book is my number three. Okay. In our uh, top 10 lineup, because I did give this book a five. I had nothing bad to say about this book. We, like Don said, we've already reviewed and talked about this on our podcast. It was one of our favorite books that we have collectively read together. There was nothing, in my opinion, wrong with this book. It was just beautifully written. 
a beautiful blend of sci-fi and fantasy and there's prophecy there's stuff happening that you're like oh well that could happen oh no that's not happening at all it's not predictable which was a nice fresh thing for Don and I to read because we read so many books there's a lot of tropes that we see all the time and I've started to turn down books because of certain things being brought up and I can see the pattern happening and there's just days where I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel <laughs> like going down that road. <laughs> or maybe I do. I don't know. But yeah, this is definitely my in my top three this year. I really enjoyed this book. Yeah. Uh, I remember us. We almost didn't do this book. I don't know why we did. Because nobody was talking about us. So we're like, we tried to pick like really, really popular books. And this was not. Uh, maybe it was mm-hmm. maybe it was high up on the Goodreads list of anticipation. I don't know. I'm glad we did because I almost didn't read it because I'm not a big fan of Megan Spooner. So, mm-hmm. well, the cover looks very not YA. It looks almost juvenile. It looks like a juvenile yeah. fiction book. So that was another like turn off because you're. I was just like, this don't look like something we would read. But yet again, like, Ashley is very big on picking books by the way that their covers are. I would not have picked this book off if I did not read the synopsis of the story Mm -hmm. and know about Kaufman. And, like, I didn't know about Spooner, but I knew about Kaufman. So I was like, okay, like, let's just, you know, let's give it a shot. Because I did the whole Aurora Rising thing. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad I did. Yeah, that was great. All right, my number three is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Schwab. We just did this series on the pod, so I'm not going to really get into it because you can listen to our thoughts there. But if you are a frequent listener to the pod, I say a lot. I don't like the writing. I don't like the writing. This is the type of writing that Dawn likes. This is exactly the type of writing that Dawn likes. It's very flowery. It's just just poured all over the page with the symbolism and the poetry I love it I don't care who knows it and I liked all the characters it does this non-linear plot that I like a lot I am a sucker for a non-linear plot I really liked Henry he's probably I liked him better than Addie actually uh just it was just a beautiful book that's all I'll say. I know it's probably in your top. I don't know where it yep. lands for you, though, but. It's in my second spot. Oh. It's in my second spot. Okay. It is. So everything Don said. Ashley had all emotions with Invisible Life of Aya LaRue. I just, I want everyone to read it. I want them to bleed the way I bled for this book. Like, <laughs> I want them to read all of the the poetry. Like, this story is just such poetry. It's so beautiful. And it's not like anything I've read before, which is awesome. Because Mm -hmm. it takes a lot for John and I to be like, whoa, didn't see that coming. I I haven't read this before. It's just, it's it's nice. It's nice that there are still writers out there that can captivate an audience with an, a very original story that we haven't read before this is going to be one of those books that i think people are going to be picking up for the next you know decade or more just because they're going to hear it from other people saying hey did you read that book no i didn't or maybe i need to yeah yeah definitely worth it cool i gave it a four and a half i don't know if i said or not I give it four and a half. Also, we couldn't we couldn't figure out why we couldn't give it a five. Don and I were still trying to like figure that out. I feel like I might just give it a five just to say I did. Oh God! Because <laughs> I can't I can't pinpoint why I I won't. I knew why a couple days ago, and now I have forgotten why I couldn't give it a five. I don't. Know. I think it I don't might know what be that because means. we liked Henry versus Addie. I think that might be why. No, that Was wasn't that- it. Not for me anyway. I don't know. I don't know. It just, like, I know a five when I see it. That's kind of how I am with books. And these last two are fives. And I knew immediately they were fives. I didn't have to think about it. If I have to think about it, it's like, well, it probably wasn't a five. So that's how I do it. That's how I do it. 
<laughs> and my number two. Right, but, yep. Which I gave a five is The Last Wish by Andres Sapkowski, which is the Witcher series. It is the pre prequel. So it is short stories of the universe. I highly recommend you read this one first, especially if you have watched The Witcher or you plan to watch it, which I think you should, especially if you are a big Game of Thrones fan and you are missing epic fantasy. I think this is a good filler for you. Uh, This, I was not expecting this at all because the show is different than the book. This book is retellings of classic fairy tales very subtly done well maybe not one of them well maybe they're not too subtle i guess not no ashley's shaking her head no it's not subtle but it's unexpected i was not expecting that and it wasn't until i was deep into the first one i was like is this snow white i think this is snow white (laughs) well okay and it was it was really good so i couldn't really get into the second book this is kind of for me like Lord of the Rings where it's just really slow and dry and I don't like dry. I like slow, but I don't like dry. That's what she said. But I do highly recommend it. It was a great read. I gave it a five. I loved it a lot and highly recommend. All right, Ashley, number one, drum roll, please. I don't know if I know. I'm, I'm, I'm confused about your number one because you haven't mentioned a book that I'm about to mention and I know you know what my number one is. So I'm like, I don't I think do. that's her number one because I don't know. Okay. I don't know. All right. Drum okay. roll, please. All right. Ashley's number one for 2020 is The Silver Serpents. By oh, Rose. I should have known. I should have known. Yeah. Okay. And here, here is why. If you have not read Gilded Wolves, you're not going to know anything that I'm talking about. This is book two <laughs> in the Gilded Wolves series, <laughs> and we follow uh, Sevron and his team. Uh, they're basically trying to regain Sevron's title for the Fallen House and reestablish, you know, him and the whole lineup of of the houses. It, there is a lot of biblical mythology and fantasy and lore and all of this stuff in here um in this book i had no idea how it was going to turn because i thought it was going to be a duology it is not it is not a duology and this particular band of friends are so close-knit that this book pulls out their deepest, darkest fears and desires and almost makes it as though each of the characters are their own worst enemy or their own demise, which is very interesting to me because each of them is going through something and you are wanting, you know, things to happen for them to find this lost artifact and reestablish, you know, the power and whatever but one wants it because they want to possess the power of a god because then they can never hurt anymore and never experience pain one is literally running out of time and could die at any moment like there's all of these twists and turns and things happening within this book there is a lot of betrayal in this book as they're like basically risking their necks to finish this one last job that's out there and yeah, it's this, but I, I literally, when I finished it, I, I had no words because I did not see what was coming at all. And very rarely is Ashley left speechless at the end of a book where I can't, it took me two days to process the ending because I still did not quite understand how we had got to that point. But then when you relook back at everyone within the start I don't want to spoil it because if you haven't read it like everything that I'm saying could be potentially spoilers I'm not using names or any of that but I like the fact that not everyone is squeaky clean I like the fact that Severan and his friends are all struggling to figure out what their identity and their purpose is in the world that they're living in so yeah it's it's still amazing I am very excited to read book three because this was I knew immediately when I started reading the second book that this was going to be a five for me. Like, you knew with 
yours that you were <laughs> you've given your fives to. I was like, yep, that's gum. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a five. Don't fail me now, you know. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely my my number one for this year. Cool. I I'll I'll probably read it. Ashley's not the only person that's trying to get me to read this series, so. <laughs> and my only trepidation is that her first book, The Star Touched Queen, I didn't like her writing. I liked her writing style, but the plot meandered, and I friggin' hate that. And she followed this second book up really quickly after that series, so I'm like, has she grown? Am I still going to be encountered with a meandering plot? Because that's why I don't read A Court of Stars and Wishes because of the meandering plot. <laughs> so I'm taking it her plots don't meander. Is that what I'm hearing from you here? Yeah, I mean, this particular series by Trashki was it was different than her first one. Her first one was there were a lot of things that were predictable and you're like, OK, that's going to happen. Like, I've seen this, you know, she's sprinkling in some Hindu mythology, like all of their stuff. And so that was interesting and I really liked it. But this one, I found that it was way more dense of a plot for me. Like, and I liked that because, yeah, I just hadn't, I hadn't read that before. And it, to me, it showed that there was growth in her writing. Okay. Um, It wasn't the same thing. And I know that there are a few of our friends that have read it and they're like, what the fuck just happened? Like, <laughs> because it was, it was that good. And it's a quick read. Okay. Well, I know she's really good friends with Saba. So maybe Saba's had some influence on her world building, perhaps. I don't know. All right. Ashley knows what my number one is. If you're uh-huh. not new to the pod, you already know. It is the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. I gave this a solid five. Uh, mostly, not mostly, I have never read anything like this before. I am not really into geology. I don't like science, and this is heavy with it, but that's okay. I got over it. <laughs> I just kind of went with it. I don't know how many times I was like, what's an obelisk again? I don't know what that means. But the world is just... It's just so rich and just so different and desolate and sad and depressing and all the bad things, but it's still hopeful. I also did not know that N.K. Jemison was black until I saw that she won the Hugo Award for this. And they were like, oh, my God, a black person's ever won this before. And I was like, oh, because her name is quite ambiguous. Like, N.K. what is that? I also didn't know that every, all the characters, well, not all of them, but a majority, at least the main characters are black as well. Once again, that does not happen in fantasy. That is a rarity. Dawn is black, by the way, just in case you're new to the pod. And so for me to find an all black fantasy book is like fantastic. If you're not, if you're white, this means nothing. You're like, what is she talking about? It's a, yeah, you get it all the time, but black people don't. And so when we do, it's like, hold on to it tight because you may never get it again. But it's not mm-hmm. just that. It's our main characters have just, they're all different and they have so much going on in their life. Like I said, it's all depressing, but it's still all very hopeful. I don't think I need to say that it's not predictable because the world is new and it's going to be new to you. Even if you are a heavy adult fantasy reader, I still think this world is going to be pretty new to you. It is quite dense. However, if you can get past it, then you will really enjoy it. I read most of it at work and I I work at a library and I was screaming and jumping up and down and like crying all in my office, sometimes at the reference desk, all the emotions. It was just, it's it's a great book. And anyone who asked me to recommend them a fantasy book, this is the first book that I recommend to them. I don't care if they read YA or not. This is what I recommend. And so I'm recommending it to you. And I haven't read the third one because I am just not prepared for... I started it and I had to put it away because it's so... I mean, you read the first book. It's so heavy. And by heavy, I mean it's really hard to read because nothing good ever happens to these people. It's just so depressing. It's kind of like The Hunger Games. Nothing good ever happens to Katniss, man. It's just constant depression and betrayal and death and 
war and so it's kind of like that heavy book but it's full of hope so maybe when I get in the right mindset I will pick up the third book and finish it <laughs> Ashley might do the audiobook of book two because I struggled with the first book because I had never read anything like that before in my life and it was when Ashley is have has read 30 pages and it has been two hours, you know that there is an issue. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, man, I feel like I just power through. And it's like, you've read 35 pages. <laughs> and Ashley like, and I don't discuss when we read a book because we read it for the podcast and we don't discuss. So you didn't like say, hey, are you making it through we didn't talk about it while we were reading it Mm-mm. i think maybe one time oh. i may have been like yeah i'm struggling too i listened to it and i was like yeah i'm struggling too and i had to i had to i didn't cheat but i had to like find some reviewers to help me because i was drowning in this book and then after i did that i was okay so i wish we sh- maybe maybe next time when we read a really dense book like that we'd be like okay let's stop and talk about it just to clear mm-hmm. it because yeah we I think that would be good because this book like I feel like I need to give it another shot like the whole series because I did do like the reviews and everything like that after and I was like oh so I wasn't completely lost I even went back and listened to our previous podcast on it and you were like Ashley let's see if you can uh pronounce all these names and I like butchered all of them except three (laughs) At least knew what the rocks were. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, alabaster. Yeah. But yeah, this was this was a really good year for us. Just Don and I powered through a bunch of books. I'm at 55 this year, and Donna's at 89. 89. She's hoping to be at 90. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we'll hit 60. I don't know. That's kind of generous. You can do it. We'll see how it goes. Might have to pick up some small books. But we really appreciate you guys hanging around with us for this year of 2020. We look forward to seeing you in the new year. May it bring all good things for all of us in the world because we definitely need it. So to that, we will catch you in the next year, in the next podcast. Bye-bye.